Hello, and welcome to Kyber Shards, a 5th edition actual play show set in the Eberron campaign world in the age of Kulsir. Eric, what happened last time? Uh, I was touching my nose since before we recorded. The last episode that aired, or... Oh, well, we don't know. What last, like... Th they'll be the same, actually. The last thing that aired will also be the last thing you played. Ah, Okay. Okay, uh, so we wrapped up the uh, Dragon Blades adventure uh, at the Dreadhold, and uh, yeah, got uh, Cardane out of there, not necessarily willingly, but <laughs> mission accomplished, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, returning him to HQ, and uh, me and Laura are kicked out of here, so obviously we're back to the Strike Force. <laughs> Any rescued, any rescued person that you walk away with is right. Is yes. that's right. That's what it is. Like, yeah. And we rescued now. Also, we rescued Wendy as well. That's true. Yeah. Bonus rescue. Yeah, it's a twofer. Uh, all right. Yes. So, um, the Strike Force returns to Metrol, uh, by way of the Wildcat. Um. You're arriving after the Dragon Blades have returned because they took the Feywild shortcut, so their movement was a little faster than yours. So, uh, as you uh, as you come in, um, you can see uh, the Dragon Blades are sitting with an unfamiliar person. Um, uh, they seem to be talking through what's been happening, uh, reminiscing in a, in a friendly way. Um, uh, but I'll look up when you come in uh, with uh, expectation and an unspoken question. Uh, we got it. Uh, and <sighs> Good. Uh, How'd things go on your end? We got him. Uh, he's, a Kadrick is saying, not quite himself. Um, something in his head is all mixed up, uh, and he doesn't think he is where he is, and he doesn't think he's been rescued so much as kidnapped. Did you kidnap him? Okay. Is it's it, fine. We've been there. Is we it know kidnapping this. if... Yes, I've learned yes. If you ask that, someone yes. up, they, 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 You're not going to interrupt him on this, Ari? You told and, me... And throw him over his shoulder for their own good. Yeah. That, I call it a rescue kidnapping? napping. This is okay. what, that's that's then, our compromise. Then we rescue napped Cardin. We yeah. can well work done. with this, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. Colsir messed with his brain when we first met him uh, mm -hmm. way back when. So that it seems like that seems to have. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, but we also got Wendy. This is Wendy. Wendy. This is Strike Force. Um, Hi, Wendy. We found Wendy while we were doing that. She's an old friend. Um, oh. We got her out as well uh, and killed the warden. Oh. Okay. Of, that sounds wow. good. The Dreadhold? Yeah. Yeah. That should... Uh, I mean, I don't know how that will wow. impact her, but she probably won't be happy about it. So. Yeah, I, I, irritated, at least. Yeah. Um, bad news is that Kulsir is at least suspicious. Uh, he sent a couple of his agents they were at the dreadhold when we were uh we managed to avoid them but um he had he had sent a couple of a couple of agents to okay check on cardane all right it's good but the know. agents you, you were able to keep the agents from knowing that something was they amiss. didn't know we were there um i don't know if they'll be aware of cardane's breakout or if, or not, um, 
I wouldn't think it would be the sort of thing that Vol would immediately communicate, but it's hard to say. All right. So, yeah, we, we, <clears throat> they, were, they had already left the area before we before we went in. I know it's been a while for you guys, but y'all's quests have gotten far more serious, and you're very yeah, good at have, it. Do y'all have cards that we need to sign off on or anything? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it it got it, it stopped being fun. Um, as things got more heavy, you know. So, yeah. but Jacques is there we, at the table. Yeah. Uh, Fog would walk over and just reach for a fist bump from Bajak. Bajak raises a raises a fist. You come a long ways. Bajak killed a vampire by himself. Pretend I said that now that I know you killed a vampire. Because <laughs> wow, wow, Oof. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it, it was. Wow. It'd be cooler if cool. he'd done it where we could all see it, but that's not really his thing anymore. Hmm. That makes sense. All Does right. it? I don't think any of us can say that makes sense. It's not, <laughs> it's not our style. Are you killing people while we're not around? <laughs> No, nope, never mind. Ari does uh, mind. does turn to look at Shade because you know, <laughs> not outside the <laughs> realm of possibility. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> one of his inquisitors knows, and I assume they well doesn't know knows something is up at least. But mm-hmm. hopefully, Bull won't admit what went down, and she'll communicate back to Colseer that Cardane is still there. So. Hopefully, all this time. I mean, I... My only hesitation with that is it's very clear that she is desperate to stop us from going back. And so any kind of trepidation she may have normally, given the circumstances, she might act a bit more rashly just to try and foil our plan. But I guess that makes a... Uh, Donna Bella says... She probably hadn't left yet. She's thorough. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess time's of the essence, you know? Yeah. So, so where are we, has Dane communicated a timeline or anything to y'all? Uh, the science team were downstairs working on the, the time machine and, and waiting on that. And right. well, I'm not sure what to do about Cardane yet. Where, where is down, he? He's downstairs. In, in... Okay. We'll go down and check in with the science team. All right. Head downstairs. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, downstairs, um, you see Dane, uh, who's kind of pacing. Um, the science team is is gathered over uh, in uh, through the doors. You can see into the the room that was clearly the, the workshop. Uh, Dane looks up, sees what's in your hands, and nods. All right. Well, that's good. Ori, I was about to ask if you're still, but then I realized there's a sense in which it hasn't been that long since I saw you. True. Yesterday. You could be... No, it's not what I meant. (laughs) I need someone to try and get into Cardane's mind and set him right. Sure. Yeah, I can give that a shot. All right, right. Um, and I'll, I'll take that. And he reaches for the staff that you have. Um, we'll get to start. Uh, Flamewind thinks that the time machine is, is ready to go. We can't test it because we don't know what will happen transporting out of the Mornland. Yeah. Um, so, but... All right. They they think it's ready. We'll get them started on this. If we can get Cardane working on it, then we can 
we can finish this and have it ready tomorrow, they think. They have all the plans drawn up, they just need it have the time to implement them. Um, okay, Philip, just mm. since we leveled and I got to pick another spell and yeah. knowing the state that Cardane was in, I did take Remove Curse knowing hey, the last time. Look at you. So we can narratively say that it's something cooler than just sure. hand waving. But yeah, yeah. If, if casting Remove Curse at fifth level would do, be enough to do it, then that awesome. would be Ari's approach. So... So yeah, Ari walks up to Cardane. Is Cardane still gagged? And I'm assuming oh, uh, bound, so, but um, yeah, Dane takes you over to a a room uh, that's clearly a holding cell, uh, mm -hmm. and inside um, <clears throat> there is uh, Cardane. Um, he is not uh, bound, and um, he's not bound and gagged, uh, but he's he's clearly in like. Uh, jumpsuit essentially that mm. they had yeah. um, just so they've clearly removed everything that was on his person yeah uh, and he immediately stands up and, and stares at you all and says I've told you I will not betray the morning star do you uh, remember me I've never seen you about 20 years ago in ziggurat I have no idea nope. what you're talking about. Okay. Um, well, here to help. Uh, of course. I'm from from out of town. So I'm trying to pull up my notes to remember, Philip. What's the name of the woman? The I? Vidalia. Uh, Vidalia. Thank you. Last time we talked, we talked about the Morning Star, and we discussed Vidalia the rebel captain yeah uh, you mentioned you uh, had a connection to her it seemed like something special and during this Ari's just trying to get close enough because remove curse is a touch spell to, mm -hmm. without him jumping he's his brow furrows, his eyes narrow, and he's focused in on this question that you raised. I mean, we're both elves, but... Let me ask you another question. Where... When do you think you are? It is the... 325th year of Kulsir, the Morning Star. See, he's lied to you again. Because it's not that. It's 1018. Is that? It's probably close to 1019, 1020. 1019. Um, um, in the year of Karn. I I don't know what strange dating system they use where you're from, but in the Dominion we date from the ascension of Kulsir. Um And then Ari would reach out and try to touch and break the spell in his mind. By uh, remove curse in this instance would be trying to get inside mm -hmm. and break whatever illusory constraints are on his head he starts to flinch away just as your hand gets on him uh and you know cinematically we'd have this wonderful montage of like zooming inside and yeah. ari is pulling apart the the webs and separating the, the disordered state of his mind and then he's panting again again <sighs> i gotta get you a helmet or something <laughs> Or just take care of Kulsir. That'll fix it. Well, that's the plan. How you feeling? Not well. But welcome back to being you. I know where I am. Or well, sort of. I 
Thank you. Of course. Again, apparently. Um, yeah, we uh, need your help. Uh, we Shortly after we met the first time, we made a big play. And we ended up jumping forward 20 years to now. So we've skipped the whole second ascension. And we're trying to get back. I see. And our science team figures that you can be of help. We have one of the Herald's weapons. And ah. we've got a device we think we can jump back with. I see. Dane gestures towards him. Let me uh, introduce you. And he nods thanks to the three of you. That went well. Yep. Good job. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Really well done. That was so easy. You you made that look very easy. It's shocking what happens when you're prepared for a specific thing. So oh. I figured. You should try that sometime. <laughs> yep. Sure should. <laughs> um, yeah. Are y'all ready for this? Assuming as soon as they're done, we jump. No. But, I agree um, to the second part. Um, I think we need to do it as fast as possible. So I don't have a bunch of thinking time. Well, unfortunately, we're not really in control of how long it takes. It's up to them, I suppose. Well, I mean, that's that's fine. I could go for like a real sleep, not just to make more blood sleep. And that's fine. <laughs> just not too many sleeps. Yeah. Yeah, I think Colsier is getting suspicious. Um, but yes, we should go as soon as we can. As soon as the things yeah. are ready. I agree. Okay. Well, let's do it. So do we just do we just watch them work? Like what Probably would that be helpful? Out. I don't think so. I think that would make things worse. Can can I be honest? I really want to hear about Bajak killing a vampire because did you see did you he's got yeah. my my like I really I want to hear about I, that. I think they also understand the urgency, so they'll let us know the instant that we can go. So we can kind of rest, chat, do it. We have some downtime while they finish it up. I kind of just want to hear oh. about murder. Let's, let's yeah. Cool. That sounds like a lot <laughs> of fun. I like a good murder, yeah. I wonder if they took his tooth and it starts to walk upstairs. But Jacques did not took take his tooth. A tooth. Come on, Bajak, what is wrong with you? Uh, you sit while Cadric very eagerly regales you with the uh, assault on the Dreadhold. Um, and as far as you know, without any unnecessary embellishment. Um, <clears throat> uh, it does get to a point where he tells you. Uh, so, Ilya as this great thing now with, through her connection with the Umbra where she can just create a space that you can step into through a wall to hide. Uh, and so we hid through the wall uh, and waited uh, while Nisaria and Imperator Stellos went down the hall. Um, and, and it was... Stop. I mean... Rewind real quick. Nisari was there? Oh, yeah. Um... She went back. Hmm. Figured her family would be better off uh, as the family of an exalted one. Um, there's a slight mutter from Donabella. She's not wrong. Yeah, so... Um, and then Stellos is a, a, a non-marked person who's, she had, uh, Wait, control over one name. of the gangs, um, 
she she had control over the Titans by the time he arrived, and so she managed to angle that into a pretty good position in his empire. Um, she's an enforcer. Stellos. Yeah. It's her last name. Yeah, last name. First name Mina. I don't know. No. We brought her to Stormreach. I mean, I feel like this is going to be one of your it's all my fault things, but. No. I was going to say, I don't really feel like bringing somebody to Stormreach makes you responsible for everything they do there. I mean, we dumped her in the street and then never followed up with her, so we could have done a bit better aftercare, but. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I mean, she's... I mean, but could we have, like, Nasaria was with us, and she also... Oh, I mean, I'm did, Nasaria, so. I... I don't like what Nasaria did. I get what Nasaria did. Like, I can understand it. Um, but... Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, that's, uh, where things stand. Well, y'all, y'all did a great job. Sounds like, yeah, y'all did too. Sounds like you all been doing a great job though. Really came into your own. We do what we came. Uh, it's, uh. Anyway, we don't have to do the whole everything's awful conversation again. Yeah. I was just paying a compliment, but No, I know. I was just I was about to Yeah. All right. Well, I guess if everything goes well, this is farewell um once we leave. Yep. Any message you'd like to send to your younger self? Oh, I've man. Had those thoughts. Don't, don't, don't <laughs> do that. Uh, hey, it's a fruit. How many uh, people get this kind of offer? Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> um, Donabella and Ilya um, get up and, and move off. Um, after a bit, Dane comes back in. Uh, it's probably getting kind of late. People are starting to head towards bed. Uh, Dane sits down. They seem to be making progress. I don't understand every fifth word, but, you know. Um, Merrick's thinks come morning uh, could be an okay. opportunity. Uh, so, he gets out a piece of paper. If the whole idea here is make a better world, then uh, there's a step I'd like to add when you get back. Um, All right. Slides a piece of paper across at you to you. Communicate that to Thora as quickly as you're able. It's a series of of nouns followed by numbers. Um, it's yeah. it's clearly clearly a cipher between them. This will tell her where Kulsir's agents in the city are. Mm. The ones that assassinate the Stormlords on the day you get back. Okay, that's great information. So, at least do we, we how able are you to? I, well, you're going back, I guess, to Shaytirias to lie and not the city. 
Yes, I mean, indeed. is there any kind of travel through space? Because we didn't jump to Sheer Tirius to lie. Right. I mean, we could put you back somewhere, but you won't be in the right place to face Kulseer. Oh, right. He's there. Yeah. So we need to jump there. So Let me ask you a dark question, Dane. Right. And Ari gestures at the cipher paper. Right before Kulseer showed up, the group of people that this piece of paper would save didn't show themselves to be allies, I guess. The question you gotta ask when you ask a question like that is who fills that vacuum? Do you feel better about the next member of the Amaran family, the next member of the Amanatu family? Whoever follows Selshadra. You can't imagine the, the next member of the Amanatu family being much worse, but... Uh, well... My understanding is the current one's weak. Well, current. At the time, the current one was at least weak. Yeah. All right. I, there's all sorts of ethical and logical questions. Uh, it's real fortunate that if you do this, presumably everything will change, and so I'm not forced to deal with the temptation of warning you about things coming up. But this was in motion when you left. Yeah. And so if All right. Thora stops it, Maybe that makes a difference. My calculation, based on the time they think they're sending you back to, I'm still close enough to the city. You get that to her. Maybe. Maybe the storm lords are in your debt. Maybe. All right. Well, you'll have to make the decision. I won't be able to. I won't know if you don't. It's true. Okay. Well, any other helpful information we can take back? Not that I know of. Everything was falling apart within weeks. Mm. So, doubt. I doubt anything I could say would be relevant if you succeed. If you don't Fair. succeed and you're still alive, get anyone you can and get them as far north as you can. Shine won't be far enough. Yeah. And then do what you can. So. Uh, anyway, I won't linger on that. Yeah. Probably ought to get some shut eye before morning. Be rested up. Yeah. All right. Um, there's some rooms through there. There should be some empty ones you can use. All right. See you in the morning. Yep. 
sleep Good well. Night. Tane gets up and walks out of the room. Uh, and because this is like the second long rest Ari's got to take with this new thing that he got from Thistle, he's like, so I don't need to sleep anymore, so I'll just hang out out here. Uh, thanks to this thing, Ari gestures to the little circlet he's wearing, so uh, still don't know what to do with the time. It's actually can, torturous to just sit here with Can no one else you sleep? Just... Or, or you just don't need to? I enter like a trance for a few hours, uh, but no, like I can't even, like if somebody were to, remember how Ezri had like that thing that could put me to sleep? Uh, yeah. That wouldn't even yeah. work now. I can't, I can't even be induced into sleep, so yeah, but so I'll be here. Y'all want me to, I don't know, write anything, paint a picture, uh, take up knitting. Quests. Yeah. Um, I guess I maybe they have I books. I was thinking keep watch in case, you know. Merrick's to Kenneth is in this HQ. I imagine that if something comes within 50 meters of this place, his little robot hound dogs are going to tear it to shreds. So I'm not actually, for the first time in a long time, I'm not too worried about what might happen while we're asleep. Huh. You're asleep. That's actually a really nice thing to say before I go to sleep. So, uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's going to be the last words for the night for me. So good, good, good night, night, guys. Good night. I wonder if they got any books around here. There are. There's some books. It's a really random collection, but there's some books. Yeah. All fantasy science textbooks. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Hog and Shade go to their rest. Ari goes to his pacing. <laughs> um, Tries to find a sports almanac of the past uh, 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, about 5 a.m. Uh, loud blaring starts to sound through the whole space. My famous last words Ari had. <laughs> Ari, I mean, Ari at this point, like the, the image is him sitting in a chair with his feet kicked back to the table, just throwing like a wadded up piece of paper in the air and catching it. And then There's a whole bunch falling of pencils backwards. in the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> and then falling backwards out of the chair as soon as the alarm starts and popping up. You're hopping up as Pog's running out of his room. All of his accoutrements in hand. There's a, there's a clattering as the dragon blades pour out of their various rooms. Um, what does it mean? Uh, pulling on gear. It's a perimeter breach. It's bad. Um, <clears throat> oh. Uh, and and they start rushing uh, um, towards the the main hall. Uh, Dane is pulling on his coat, uh, coming into the room. Uh, and he walks over to a wall, touches a couple of runes, and and a. Uh, some sort of display pulls up that <sighs> all right all right uh, he touches a rune on the wall this is code black I need everyone let's go there's a general chaotic clattering. That uh, sounds and bad. After after a moment, Merrick comes running up the from from the from downstairs. He looks over the display. Oh, sovereigns! We don't know what code black means. Can someone fill us in, please? Or or right. where to go? Right. Or what to? We we're, we're burned. We're found. Uh, all right. Hold on, hold on. Is it ready? 
It is as ready as I can make it. I don't have any way to... The only people I have, the only time displaced people I have are them, and I can't test it on them. Well, let's run it. Um, all right. Okay. Merrix. You're taking... All right. You take... You, Strike Force is going with Merrix. Cadric and Ilya, you're making sure they get to the ship. Forge, too. Take Forge as well. Bajok and Donabella, you're evacuating non combatants. Get them to the Wildcat. Get airborne. Put Tommel on my ship cover yeah all right uh, there's starting to be a, a, a vague sound of crashing coming from beyond the doors uh, all right everybody downstairs we've got additional passageways out all right um, <clears throat> and you're all clattering downstairs Flamewind and Forge and Cardane are standing by. <sighs> Professor Flamewind, um, you don't have any problem with Behirs, right? <laughs> Never met a Behir. Uh, Sam's great, you'll love him. Um, I'd like you to go with Bajok and Donabella, the kids, and get the non combatants on the Wildcat. Forge, you're with Merrix and the Strike Force, Tonabella and Ilya, to the ship. I need a pilot. Um, Cardane, uh, we don't know each other well enough for me to properly apologize, but um, they're here. I don't know which part of this they clued in on, but they're here, and so. Strike Force and make sure the time machine works. You can go with Flame Wind and they'll get you north. And maybe we'll meet up again someday. Uh, but you'd probably prefer not. Uh, Cardane uh, is quiet for a moment and then says, I. I think I'll stay here if it's all the same help out on the perimeter until everyone is out. I'm rather tired from running from him. So. Dane doesn't bother with arguing, it just nods. Right. Get those codes to Thora. We'll do. Everyone else We've done it before. We can do it again. Go. Uh, and everybody starts moving. Uh, doors are opened and uh, Forge starts leading you down a passage. Uh, Ilya and... I'm sorry, Donabella and... Uh, Ilya and Kadrick. Here we go. Ilya and Kadrick are following you down the passage uh, as Merix walks ahead. Merix holding the staff that you brought back. Uh, and Forge has the um, time machine, which is levitating slightly off the ground, and they're just pushing it along. Uh, and Merix is rapidly trying to explain the function of this staff, which is just... Merix has never been, like, a popular... He's never been the Neil deGrasse Tyson of his world, where mm -hmm. he takes this thing and brings it down to you. Um, but what you get is... Any of you will be able to activate this staff okay. hmm. with what one might call an action. Uh, this will force Kulsir to make a save. The save DC will increase as his physical well-being decreases. Heard. Okay. And... If 
it overcomes his mental and physical resistance, then I... Flamewind tried to explain it to me several times, and he seemed to have a really good picture in his head of what it would do to him. I don't know what it means, but it will be very, very bad for him. As long as it beats him, I don't think we need more detail. That seems to be the... You will not need to worry about him anymore. Any risk to the person wielding it? I don't think so. Okay. Just takes time displaced back. people. And you won't be time displaced anymore. I suppose technically by a few seconds you might be considered time displaced, but it'll be all right. Yep. If we end up in the place we in time we intend. Yes. If I'm being perfectly honest, I feel very good about the time machine portion of this. Oh. All right. Several okay. people with good understandings of it all have signed off on our work. Confident that you'll make it back to when and where you're supposed to be. All right. So, um, uh, I wish that we could have a better relationship where we're headed to, but it's been nice seeing you work here. Yes. Uh, as you go through a door, um, Cadric pauses and looks back and then pushes a button on the wall and the wall just slides in and you hear the sound of grinding metal as things seal behind you. Um, Ilya says, They'll get them to the ship. It will be fine. The wildcat won't draw attention. Yeah, I know. Crashing increases behind you. Um, you can you can hear sounds coming from multiple different directions that are clearly uh, violence, um, uh, masonry and stonework being torn apart, uh, explosions, um, some of which are probably traps being triggered. You flee further down the passage towards a um, towards a lift that will take you up through the Vermishard. Uh, behind you. Dane stands in the lab with Cardane. Cardane is, uh, grabbing random tools and seeming to work on something. Dane says, you, um, you know what you're doing? I mean, I know you know what you're doing, but any brilliant ideas? I only have brilliant ideas. Uh, you and Merrick's must get along well. Uh, <laughs> I need only a few moments. That's probably what I can give you. And, uh, Cardin says, excellent. Um, good. Yes, that will do. Uh, Dane walks and closes the lab door behind him. Um, as the crashing intensifies and a large section of the wall uh, gives way uh, and the enormous figure of the Emperor Kulsir uh, steps into the room. Up ahead, as you race down the corridor, uh, the crashing intensifies nearby Merrix goes to the to a portion of the wall and it opens into a small room uh, like a freight elevator essentially uh, and then pulls up another wall display ah. um, Hermit Breach is at multiple points ah uh, Yes. I need you all to do something for me. Um, Artifice right. never work for free, uh, as you may have heard. Um, little joke, all right. What, what, do you, what do you need? <laughs> oh. He pulls out a, what looks like a piece of wood with runes carved all over it, uh, and offers it to you. I can definitely break this. I don't do that. Oh. Uh, please don't do that. If you could make sure Forge gets this, 
if you make it back. Uh, Forge looks up from um, where they are securing the time machine in the lift. Are you sure? We both run the numbers. Am I wrong? Statistically unlikely. Well, then there you have it. Okay. Uh, well, it'd be good to see this work. Uh, but even if I saw it happen, I wouldn't. I don't know. Anyway, good luck. Um, try not to be killed. Uh, and um, please make all this worthwhile, if you would. That's the plan. We'll try. Ah, good, good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I suspect that I can buy the landing pad a few more minutes. Um, short acquaintance, but delight to meet you all. And he pushes a button on his gauntlet and some uh, hatches slide open and several smaller versions of the retriever drones crawl out. Come, my pretties. Let's show what a brilliant mind can do when it turns to violence. <laughs> and, uh, touches a button and the lift door closes behind you. Uh, and you begin to rise through the rumor shard. It makes sense we were never his friend. I the am irony that glad the tools that are going to he's on our side. I say the irony that the tools that are going to buy us time to do this are probably the ones that are going to kill us where we're headed to. So, <laughs> yes, all of this feels very weird. Behind you, uh, Merrick's uh, paces down the hallway uh, until a wall several yards ahead of him gives way, and a bunch of armored figures just covered in dragon shards, bodies unhealthily large and muscle-bound with seeming madness in their eyes, uh, come in led by uh, a drow uh, with fire running up her arms. Uh, and she looks at Merrick's toys, I see. Good. It's been very dull so far, just breaking through walls. And Merrick says, I am probably the smartest person you'll ever kill, so let's enjoy it. Uh, the lift rises and finally shudders to a halt and opens. You're on the landing pad above the Vermishard. The Wildcat is there. You can see Donabella and Bajak escorting various people on board. Um, Catter Canilius' children are there. Uh, Windy is there. And there are several people you don't know from before. Flamewind is already aboard. Malcolm is firing up the elemental ring. Cadric looks over at Bajok, uh, and the two sh the t a nod passes between them uh, as he leads over towards the uh, towards Dane's ship. Um, <clears throat> uh, Forge loads the time machine aboard as Tama walks over uh, and comes aboard with you all. You can see the Wildcat lift off and head into the sky as you climb aboard and, and the hatch closes behind you. Further back, the main hall of the lab is a wreck. Uh, walls are, are crumbling and furniture is smashed to ribbons. Um, Dane picks himself up off the floor again uh, as Kulsir looms over him. This is a farce. You know this is a farce. Another pathetic, pointless, performative display. And Dane spits blood and gasps and says, Yeah, I know. I just don't have another one in me, so why not? Do one more. 
uh, and his fist suddenly glows brightly and he lashes out, catching Kulsir across the face. Uh, the giant emperor uh, rears back, snarling, uh, and then s- glares at um, at Dane, lunging at him with the with the huge axe. Uh, Dane darts into his grasp and lands more blows, raining blows on his on his torso uh, and face in rapid succession uh, before the emperor throws him off and staggers back. The axe clattering to the ground. Uh, he he puts a hand to his face and pulls it away, and there's this this scorch from the power of Dane's fists across his face. Dane laughs mirthlessly. She'd have liked that. The Emperor says, this is... uh, You people don't know when you're done. This is not your world anymore. You had that opportunity long ago. Dane is. Dane gets back up, readying himself, and then gasps slightly. Kulsir's outstretched arm receives the axe as it flies back to his hand. Dane looks down at the ruin that the passing axe has left across the left side of his body, blood welling from where his left arm used to be. Emperor says, See, nothing. And Dane says, ah. I'll give it my best shot. That's all she ever wanted. And I think that was a few moments. Kulsir pauses and then the lab door explodes outward and the ceiling collapses. The ship lifts off uh, Forge puts it in gear and it rockets towards the sky probably before you're quite ready for it to do so. Um, I am steering for the nearest border with the wall of mist. I see no reason why we cannot activate from within the ship once I get you beyond the arcane uh, possibility of arcane interference from the Mornland. Okay. So uh, make whatever preparations you may need. When it activates, you should go back to um, maybe about ten seconds is our goal after you left um, just to avoid any possibility of you reappearing in the room with yourselves um, and creating confusion. So, uh, any preparations you might make uh, and the ship shudders um, and you glance out one of the windows and the uh, the wing is on fire ah, uh, yeah and there are figures mounted on what look like enormous bat dragons they're like sort of stubby bodied reptilian headed streaming what seem to be streaming shadows behind them instead of um, instead of wind uh, as they they flap along uh, Tomal rolls his eyes I don't have a speech to make um, let's be honest we were never friends uh, I, I looked out for you in school because we went to a crappy school and you were like me but the time that we've actually known each other hasn't been great for either of us and as far as I can tell you're going back to a place where we're probably not going to be friends again so I can fly Forge needs to pilot the ship so what it is uh, as the hatch is opening he's walking towards it for what it's worth I'm glad we didn't kill you again Yeah, me too. Uh, and he steps backwards and drops into the air. Uh, the hatch closes. Glancing out the window, you see 
a shadowy winged figure rocket into one of the uh, one of the bats, which loses one of its wings to his sword and spirals down through the air. Uh, the ship shudders a couple of times, and then the pursuit seems to fall behind. Behind you. The passageway is mostly on fire. Bits of machinery and bits of aberrant minions are scattered around the hall. Uh, Tahak, the drow herald of Kulsir, uh, grasps Merrick's by the throat, her, his skin blackening uh, in her grasp. <sighs> I haven't had a fight like that in decades. So, thank you for that. Merrick coughs. You're welcome. Do you mind if I ask a question um, in recompense? A hawk says, fine, whatever you want, old man. Are you familiar with the concept of a dead man's trigger? And there's a slight moment of confusion at the urgent beeping that's rising in frequency, and then a blinding flash of light is the most brilliant and terrible mind in Corvair <laughs> winks out of existence. The ship is shaking. Uh, Forge calls from the front. If I could have everyone's attention, please. I don't know if you've noticed, um, but the ship is not actually currently intact. Um, it is holding together because I will it to be so at the moment. I am not entirely certain it will remain so all the way to the border. I have elected a perilous, but I think ultimately successful course to try and bring us above the mist. At which point you should activate the machine. Okay. I will hold the, the ship together at least that long and I may successfully glide it to a landing but I am concerned that there may be the possibility of you attempting to activate the machine while free falling through the air if I proceed along this course uh, any further yeah, that doesn't sound good yeah no okay uh, it would be bad um, Kadrick and Ilya I understand that this does not necessarily sound like an excellent idea, but you are both more likely to fall to death than I am, even from a great height. I think your best bet is to go with the machine. What would that mean? Oh, I, I'm not sure, but remaining will probably mean falling from a very, very great height <clears throat> into the Mornland, uh, and that will probably be worse than anything that it could mean. All right. So You're with us then. This is an opportunity to cast any preparatory spells or take any actions that you would prefer to take before a battle uh, as presuming everything goes as intended you will be arriving in a room full of hostiles mechanically i would just like to say that it happens at the last possible moment because it's sure. 10 minutes of time so if you can just grant me that grace i will assume uh, that it began the second before we rolled in the second that we rolled initiative in perfect terms of then the it'll be the casting of fire shield all right um, yeah, I mean, Ari's will be, uh, Shadow of Moil, um, but more, as the ship is ascending, 
mm-hmm. um, and we have a brief moment. Um, Ari grabs Shade's hand and looks at her. If it doesn't doesn't go right, I'm sorry. I didn't know how to do it well. I love you. Um, Shade will squeeze his hand back and lean in and kiss him. Kadric is looking at the machine. Uh, I'm so sorry, and I'm going to summon Minnie, just so Minnie's sure. there with us making contact. I'm nervous. Yeah. Uh, I really thought it'd be harder. Someone's written in chalk. Push here. So it's helpful. they knew who they were making it for. Um, my my action was just to to choose the the quiver um, mm-hmm. that I wanted. Okay. Season. Ooh, words. Yeah, yeah here we go. Are you choosing? <laughs> uh, winter. I'm gonna so. do ice damage. Cool. Uh, there's a moment of just brilliant light as Dane breaks through the breaks through the mist, uh, and and you are in clear air, much higher than any of you have ever been on an airship. Um, it's not hard. And uh, Forge. You know, from what he, from what they said, Forge is obviously concentrating very hard, but there's no like vocal cord musculature to strain, so Forge's voice sounds the same cheerful calm sweating. that it always does. <laughs> this is the maximum altitude before this vessel will probably begin to plummet out of the sky, so I recommend now. 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 Push. Cadric pushes the button. And you aren't there anymore that is where we will wrap up this episode (laughs) Uh, good job philip thank you well done sir that was really that was really good uh if you guys would like to get in touch with us you can do so at links down below uh, where you find links to our Discord and all of our social media, including to the Geek Pantheon YouTube channel, where you will find Eric uh, making videos about various TTRPGs. Um, uh, you can also hear more of Eric and me playing things on the Geek Pantheon podcast, which maybe is into the beginning of a third season campaign at Perhaps. this point. Yep. I, if not, it's the right time to if start because they're about to be. Yeah. yeah. If, if not, if not now, soon. Um, You'll find a link to Colin's Twitch where he is sorry, BTR. The O in that is a zero. Uh, new episodes of Kyber Shards drop on Mondays. Kyber Shards answers most Fridays. Uh, feels like the most accurate thing to say anymore. But until next time, thanks for rolling with us.